Hello, my name is Zhang Wu, and my family and I have lived in eastern China for many years. My family and ancestors have been through the end and decline of the Han Empire. They faced much disease, political problems, and wars. Luckily, they have survived along with a few others. After this dynasty soon fell, they experienced a period called the Six Dynasties. It was an unstable time with a single weak government. However, there was no real dynasty that ruled all of China. And out of this chaos arose the Sui Dynasty. The Sui Dynasty will be the one to bring northern and southern China out of this era of division and reunify China after three and a half centuries of regionalism. The time period of this dynasty was 581 to 618. Emperor Yang Jie, also known as Wendy, helped and took this next step to bring China together. That would be me. Hello, I am Yang Jian, but you can call me Wendy or Wen. I reigned from 581 to 604. I was the first emperor of the Sui dynasty. You may have heard of me because of one of my biggest impacts on China. That would be how I formed many large military groups in China to unity. I was able to expand the empire. My military was essential to my conquest. Before Wen of Sui came along, the six dynasties in China were weak, so he was easily able to demolish them, and this was the official start of the Sui dynasty and his military. With 518,000 troops, 8 attacks, and 2 armies, plus a navy, Wendy was able to capture their capital, uniting northern parts of China with the south. To do this, I married my daughter to their emperor of the Chu, and I was able to sneak my army in through the east to kill their emperor and many princesses, reuniting China, which hasn't been done since the Han Dynasty. Unfortunately, I did not live too long after my reign. My son, Yang Guang, also called Yang Di, murdered me because he was very anxious for control and to have the power that I established for myself. During one of his early attacks, a nearby artist was able to capture their army in one of his paintings. It can be currently found in the National Art Museum of China. This art piece can show that his army was overpowering to armies from the Six Dynasties. They had little men in armory compared to the Sui army. From this painting, the viewer can clearly see that Yang Jie had a fierce army compared to other ones. Along with the military, Wendy also established uniformed institutions of government to help run his dynasty. He also raised crops of skilled and pragmatic administrators that were trustworthy. He also re-established Confucian rituals that were last used by the Hun, and also began to slowly foster Buddhism. After my death, the strong militias I had formed were not put to good use. The Sui had many more military campaigns that were unsuccessful under Yang Dai. He attempted to overthrow a neighboring dynasty in Vietnam by raiding them, but he was driven out by many diseases. He did not have much of an impact on them or destroy anything. Yang Dai was unimpressed by his work, so he went over to another neighboring dynasty in Korea. He planned to raid them as well with a very strong determination this time. He was able to establish one of China's biggest armies with 3,000 warships plus 1.2 million foot soldiers plus 50,000 people on horses plus 50,000 artillery. With this army and four expeditions in Korea, the Sui failed and lost many men. Along with this loss, his citizens lost trust in the empire, which eventually led to the fall of the dynasty. Along with military conflicts came military legal reforms. Their political system and government followed those of early dynasties like the Xin. They needed a strong administration and came up with the idea of the civil service exam. This helped stop corruption, chose aristocrats, underlined several petitions, sent taxpayers drafts, agreed on taxes, and worked with currency. Since China was now stable, both Wen and Yang Di worked on improving China's economic state. Both emperors attempted to level the economic plane level and increase agricultural productivity. They introduced the equal field system. This meant that the government owned all the land, then distributed it to people based on their ability to produce labor. They also wanted to make 
sure that no farmer will get swallowed by large estate owners. Both me and my son wanted to push and spread religion throughout China. Personally, I favored Buddhism, so following Indian teachings, I started to spread the idea of Buddhism. My son also pushed my Buddhism beliefs, but he also brought back some works of Confucianism from the Han Dynasty and would implant some of those rituals throughout the empire. Overall, the Sui was not culturally unique in many ways. It mainly worked as a transition period between the Han and Tang. Poetry and writing slowly started to come up again, but there was re nothing really special about it. What did start to flourish again was the art and paintings. Many painters and artists came to China seeking patronage from a built palace that was spreading Confucian ideas. This started to bring the arts and architecture back to China again. They focused on using this to help the empire grow and build new infrastructures. The Su Yi dynasty was also known for their extravagant projects like being responsible for the Grand Canal, the largest canal in the world, and starting the project of the Great Wall of China. It was pretty great. Get it? Wink. But of course, these projects came with many costs and problems. The Su Yi resembled many of the Qin dynasty's legal policies and followed their examples of building legal infrastructures. Many of thousands of peasants were forced to work for these projects with little or no pay. The canal helped transport great amounts of food and people and made overall travel much easier. However, the increase in taxation to fund this project and the burdens the peasants faced hurt the empire dearly. The Sui dynasty was one of the shortest dynasties in imperial China, and this was at the fault of Yang Di. The majority of his actions and decisions hurt and led to the fall of the empire. He was a tyrant, so not many people liked him. Also, he would tax very heavily and had a high conscription rate. This hurt the peasants and really affected the poor. Also, the amount of failures he had with campaigns and the loss to Korea and Vietnam made his citizens lose faith in the country. So it wasn't very long before Yang Di was murdered by his own advisors. And the result of this led to the fall of the dynasty, leading to the next one, the Tang Dynasty. Zhang Wu, why is it important that today's students learn about the Sui Dynasty and the works of my son and I? It is important students understand it because the Sui dynasty was the next dynasty to come after the Han. They set the way for a new art, government, and religion in China for later dynasties to come.